This is the Transportation and Parking Commission meeting for December 17th, 2013. It's 4.05. We have a quorum of six out of 11 members. Um, so we'll get started. Uh, no public to speak of today, so we'll just... Um, uh, we don't need to... Well, let's introduce ourselves because Alex, Alex is new and... So let's go around. I'll start. I'm the um, Ward 3 City Councilor and the Chair of the Commission. Thank you. Thanks. Sustainability. Uh, Deb and Bruce on one of Wayne's Planning Board Committees, and this is my collateral assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Harger is with the Board of Health. Yes, so Alec Mubik uh, from DPW. Ned Huntley, Director of Public Works. James Lowenthal, Citizen Member and also on the Bicycle Pedestrian mm -hmm. Committee. Have the council clerk who may not be with us much longer in the, into the next term. We don't know. Um, no, I mean, I mean, with this commission. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's how rumors get started. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't mean anything. Other than that. She may not be staffing the commission next year. I'm um, sorry about that. This meeting is both audio and video recorded. I do not see anyone for public comment, and so we'll go to reports from committees. We've got really one committee going on right now, the bike ped, so quick report. Yeah, I'll start. We, we discussed a bunch of things today, but the most important one is to begin to think about we're looking at a lot of, particularly bicycle things, sort of randomly, sort of looking at things as they come up, um, and being thinking we really should have a more comprehensive, at very least, bicycle plan, a possibly bicycle pedestrian plan. Mm -hmm. So we sort of very, very briefly began the discussion. And more discussion about things that probably don't need to come to the whole committee in terms of where there should be future off ramps to off main bike path, um, what's the status of the Amtrak and the tunnels there, so sort of updates about that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, any other comments or questions about the report? Do we have any other committees we want to? I mean, parking committee doesn't really doesn't have enough members. I, I put that, uh, I put nominations just in case we had. Any nominations? Yeah, I don't think so. Alex is willing. Alex is willing to step up to replace Laura's slot on the board on the transportation. I'm sorry, the bike head subcommittee. Oh, great. Um, and it got pressure of a vote from this committee. Great. Let's um, let's put a twelve though. Yeah. Right. Sure. Right. Great. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, let's just okay. do that. Um, Okay, amend uh, 312.102 and 312.109 relative to removing the parking space near the Cross Rock at Michael and Holyoke on Pleasant Street. Uh, well, I wish Dave, Director Pomerantz was here, but maybe he's out today. Um, I drafted proposed ordinances. I put an X where I was hoping that uh, DPW would put out some technical assistance. Um, this is, so far as I can tell, relative to removing uh, one the, fine, the one parking space at the crosswalk um, by uh, Holyoke Street and Michael Manav on Pleasant Street. Remember, we had people come in uh, from um, from kind of two streets over from William Street and. and uh, Reporting from people who live on Holly and Williams, that it is it has been helpful to have that mm -hmm. more situation. So, um, for the visibility of pedestrians, yes, by drivers on Pleasant Street, yes. Okay. Um, so this is for this would be for sponsorship. Can I ask? I, I'm fine with this. I'm so concerned about the next agenda item. Do they have to go? Do we do one about that? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this would just be to remove the parking space. That's my understanding. Uh, can I get a motion to recommend or to sponsor? So, second. Second. Ms. Bruce. Um, discussion. Five. Then no concerns from your standpoint. We just got to take out the parking meter and take out the paint that's out there. Probably hatch it yellow. I'm pretty I'm sure I have this right. I'm a little more concerned with the next one that's not clicking in my my head right. The one on Kingsley. 
312.109? Yes. Okay. You have a typo in there too. Oh, yeah. 3123? Three? Yeah, yeah, that's just saw that. Correct. Okay. I can fix that. Um, this is to make it no parking. Uh, so this oh, wait, just takes away the, the this meter should, location? This should take away the meter location. Okay. That's right. Yeah, so the, yeah, for the first, the 312.102 uh, makes it prohibited to park there, but the 312.109 uh, just moves the meter, I think. Do we need the vote? Yeah, you yeah. should take care of everything at once. So what we'll do is we'll have Alex go out there as soon as we can see the pavement markings okay. and measure that distance X. <laughs> right, that's, gets it right. that's the issue I'm looking at, right? It, we need two X's, really. Um, yep. I think it's the same X, though. To a point north of from my It point. should be the same X. Yeah. Can I ask, is the agenda going to have for next Thursday? Let's go to the 2014 council? I imagine so, yeah. Yeah, that, that we won't have it. I mean, we don't even have the real the number to work okay. yet, so. Um, so, uh, I guess we could sponsor this provisionally. Let's sponsor it. No, it's, 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 it's a fact what you're after. I mean, it will be a measurement. Okay. Um, Phil? I'm sorry. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, all right, so we're going to vote. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. This is for both. 312, 102, 312. Uh, no, it's next. I So we get that distance. Actually, we want to send it away to the city council. Or do you want to send it because I'll be further down the ordinance then? Yeah, and I'll okay. be gone. So you'll be um, around. Yeah, I mean, but I'll be I won't be the chair anymore. <laughs> so yeah, send it I guess directly to the clerk. Yeah. Is that okay? Okay, great. Um, okay, so we've got uh, number seven bike rack on Lower Pleasant Street, further traffic on. So let's let's talk about this. I put it on the agenda because the again the folks who are here wanted we're asking that the bike rack be moved to that current parking spot um, to try to, uh, um, I guess, create the same kind of buffer or something like that. that we and it ensures it's not a parking place. It's still got visibility. It's a better parking place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't really this. I think it's sort of a waste of resources. As a practical matter, I'm not, I, if evidence on a bicycle park there, I have no problem with it. But absent evidence, I hate to use just a metal structure to block the space and do it for wasting it. Makes that's a piece of money. Good point. Uh, I, I can only offer anecdotal evidence. I've been down there, I see bikes parked, but I do see a lot of, uh, there, are, there is some amount of uh, inventory there. Uh, so but, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to use, I, I've never had to like, it's like it, I wouldn't want to empty, then people say, oh, why would you spend on that? Sorry, the location, the exact location is not outside of Hampton Coffee, but across Pleasant Street from there? No, no, right. No. It, it kind of south. Of kind of two doors down from Hampton Coffee. So between Hampton Coffee and Hampton Box. Yeah, exactly. And um, it is you. I mean, there are bike bikes parked there, but there's a decent amount of bike racks there anyway. But there could be. Could be more. The proposal is to move some racks that have already been identified. And this is the one that Craig donated to the city. So the bike corral that used to be outside, it's portable. Uh -huh. yeah. His office. And is there another location in downtown that might see more frequent use and be closer to public transportation? Like the single parking space right in front of Velocity Park? Well, I think Buses, it's that way they can use the bike ground and hop on the bus to. I think it is at Velocity Park now. Oh, okay. Um, the sense I, I, I think I recall, and we might as well, like when it was donated to the city, the idea would be that it would move around a little bit, but it's expensive to, to move it. I mean, it's not that expensive, but it takes manpower to move it. So I wonder um, if there's a trade off between trying it in a place for six months and the expense of moving around. Is there, is there a need for something like that that shows them the park and ride? There's, there's a lot of racks there. Okay. So I think we're probably the locker. The locker's supposed to stay empty there. I, 
I also thought that Craig's intention, uh, which follows um, a train around the country, is that it actually go along the street and that it does replace car parking. That, that's the concept of the bike corral, that you turn one car space into eight or ten bike spaces. It, it didn't come to the city with that. That wasn't part of his offer. It didn't come to the city that way. And it was not part of the council vote. But seven, at least two of the councilors, when it came before the council accepted, said they hoped we didn't lose surface space. We, they hoped it wasn't a trade off to one person to get that. And that's not binding, but that's sort of what a couple of councilors threw out. Which is not an issue here because we're definitely losing space anyway. Right, right. I don't know. I think, I think it yeah. seems like a good idea. Well, I, I'd say um, I kind of like to, cause it, because it's under central services control, I kind of like to see Director Pomerantz here to discuss it. Um, but uh, I do think that the intention of it, the intention of receiving it was to kind of move it around the city a little bit. Um, maybe we should refer this to... That's about $200 per single unit. I'm wondering if the bike company and the coffee shop might do what Craig did and want to bike rack outside their establishment. Coffee shop's even more bike friendly than the bike shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, do, do you think do you think we would want to refer this maybe to Bike and Pet? And and if, if you got if Bike and Pet maybe could come up with some policy around some recommended policy We're around not doing it until April and May. Moving it around though. I mean Yeah. Well I think that's a good idea. We're up, we're up for the bike rack out. Oh, uh, oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Yeah. It's not. There's no. It's not going out next month. Okay. Um, you know, because I think it's a it's a valuable resource yeah. that we can use here and there. But I think we need a little bit of policy. Um, so uh, can I get a motion to refer? Just do you mind just taking it up? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then maybe we can consult with Director Pomerantz about the logistics and so on. Okay, great. Any further, do we want to discuss any further traffic coming over on Pleasant Street on that spot, on the Hollyoak Street, Michaelman intersection? Taking away the parking space, that's been good. Just as a broad discussion, that I don't know if it's parking or what the discussion will be, but you know, Ned and I have been working with Mass DOT about taking over a portion of Pleasant Street at which point there's room definitely for parking at one side of Pleasant Street and maybe two sides. Mm -hmm. um, and so that obviously is a longer term. Right, um, that would calm yes, Right. Um, so at some point we should have a discussion about that. Any other thoughts about that intersection, that spot? No, I just have to agree with Wayne. Wayne if we take that first section up the Hockman Road or thereabouts, we could actually transition parking that much further up and I'm sure we'll be there's new businesses down there that have opened up recently. Yeah. So that may calm some traffic down. Okay. Well, um, let's uh, move on. How, how many years away is the circle? Probably four to five. To actually open it, right? It's Pardon in, me? To actually open it. Yeah. Can start construction. In construction. Yeah. I haven't seen it in the tip yet. It's statewide. Tate statewide. So it's not even coming out of our allocation. Which is what, that by 15 or 16 or something right now? Yeah, which, something like that. Who knows what's going to play out? Right, so I get pushed back. Uh, all right, let's move on. Um, traffic calming application data. Uh, we talked about this last month, and um, I hope maybe DPW has a little traffic data for us. Yeah, I have traffic data from 2012. Uh, goes and that was construction season, so okay. it's not that accurate. Uh, the new data should come in soon from uh, PDPC, but I don't know when. So from 2012, August, where we had, we had on big, on big days, we had approximately 2,000 cars per day. Wow. And weekends it was like around 1,000. Three percent of those cars were trucks, I and mean, construction trucks. Um, 
did limit, it was supposed to be limited to 30 miles in there. But uh, for, for traffic study, 82% of the cars open the speed limit. And 16% of the cars go within 5 miles over speed limit. And only less than 3% that goes more than 35. So we actually in 82 percentile and speed limit design in 80, for 85 percentile. So I don't think the speed limit is, I mean speed is a factor. Yeah. Yeah, and this is probably heavier use than than previous years because of construction, right? Because this was a way to avoid construction. Exactly. The day out was the tip at the end of North you're coming at the end of North Street. Um, so it's more cars, but speed is not affected. I've never seen any problems with uh, speed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so as far as release of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission's information, that's a contract they have with Coca-Cola and not with the city. But I hope that Coca-Cola will be forthcoming and release that subject to the public. So we have that updated information, just so you're aware of that. So so could you tell me where we like do you, do you need me to shake some heads over at Coca-Cola? Well, I don't think that Dennis, Dennis uh, Williams should be forthcoming with that. I don't think that'll be an issue offhand. But the, the study was commissioned by Coca-Cola, not the city. Yeah, the Coca-Cola co paid for it. Right. Um, did, I saw, are you in contact with them? Or? I saw Dennis the other day. I'd, I'd be more happy to contact him again. But did, I mean, does he know that we want that data? I don't know that yet. Okay. I'm sure he does, but I have to convey that to him. All right, all right. So, did, did the study include crash data? No. No, the, no <laughs> they just did the, they spent like eight ten thousand dollars on on traffic counters all around the area, basically all the, basically on almost all the streets surrounding the Coca-Cola. They could have done a request for police data. They could have, outside of my knowledge. I don't, I don't think they did that. Okay. The problem, it takes so long for them. They had to review traffic counts three times. Yeah. DVPC did? Yes. Why? And uh, they had problems. Uh, one counter didn't work at one time. And Something happened on the second time. So, even third time, they had some uh, problems. So that's why it takes them time. Okay. So, you'll, you'll contact uh, Mr. Williams and see if we can. I will. Okay, thank you. Uh, Do we know oh, the time frame for which the data is going to come? Because couldn't we make the request of the police? Because I was shocked when I realized how many times they go to deal with an open house truck in that neighborhood. It seems like if that's not part of the study, we could get that and it would be relevant. Uh, yeah, I think we would, we should include that on the day avenue, on day avenue, for, like part of this application. Is that, um, you know, the chief right here. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll ask the chief. Yeah, I don't know. We may typically get crash data to go along with the speed and the volume, but in this case, I'm more interested in how many times he has to go negotiate a truck out of there, so there's not a... I think when they write a ticket, he'd have a category of tickets. Right. Okay. I'll ask for that. So, for day after, it's mostly volume. That is the issue, I mean to some of the other streets, I would imagine the volume is higher. But 30 miles an hour is, they're going 30 miles an hour on the street. But it is. Any other thoughts from anybody? Yeah, just a question. Uh, I'm, I don't remember the details of that application. So where were the main uh, problems anecdotally from the proponents who brought their application forward? Speeding and trucks, I remember. Yeah, speeding is pretty much trucks. So it's perceived high speed. Yeah. And a lot of trucks. Right. And 3% yeah. is not a lot. And that during construction. Right. So and do we was think it was 3%? Was that? Yeah. Do we think most of those? Less than 3%. Was, do we think most of those, in fact, were construction trucks? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think, I mean, 
I remember some of the data from before 2012. Um, it's around two to three percent. Um, track and trailer trucks, any kind of trucks. So this is not coming from the Montessori school? You mean like school buses or anything? Yeah, the, uh, the concerns. Oh, no, no. Yeah, the residents that they have. Right, residents, yeah. And, you know, I, I use that street frequently, and, and um, it's, I think that the times where there aren't a lot of cars on it, people do go faster. But it's usually, there are usually a lot of cars on it. <laughs> so they can, you know, can go that quick, that fast. Uh, but they, I think it's a constant volume, and it's hard to know what to do with traffic on It doesn't really seem like it's a great match for traditional traffic calming application. It seems like this broader discussion that everyone's been having about front bypass and how to get to coast, that may actually be, not, it's not unique to the avenue, that might be more important. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think it's less traffic calming per se, is trying, still again, the rerouting of truck traffic. Any other thoughts on this? on this traffic calming application. I guess I'm getting the feeling that it's probably not going to rise to the top of the, the heap. Unless something comes up with the EPC report that we're unaware of. So let's um let's get the let's see if I can get the police calls and such from the chief. And um, I think we should probably continue to file this under a one of the known issues about truck traffic. Do, do you know or sidewalk? What's the condition on sidewalks today? I don't know off the top of my head. There's a sidewalk <laughs> on the north on the north side that's um, decent. It's even got a little short. It even has a little tree belt. In some Is that the downtown side or the river side? The uh, river side. Okay. Um, there's no sidewalk on the south side, and that's where parking is. The parking. There's a one lane. There's one. Park, parking on one side of the street on the south side. Um, frankly, when cars are, when even a normal car, but certainly when trucks and, and oversized cars are parked on that side, people, people who can't don't get. It's difficult to fit two lanes of traffic there. It, there's almost a chicane. Um, yes. And the uh, and the curb on the north side is not very good. It's it's really low to the. Um, Street, some of it is worn away completely, um, and it just hits. It just hits grass sometimes. So the the curbing isn't great on the north side. That actually would respect those concerns maybe more than trying to actually reduce the volume or the speed. Mm -hmm. I think people have taken to parking their cars on the street a little bit more. I mean, it's a renter population. There's partial renters down there, there now. People park on the street to slow traffic. Uh, okay, let's. Um, I'll see if I can get some data, and we'll put this on a simmer. Uh, TCA four and four A State Street and Trumbull Road. <coughs> did I, Did you guys put up new signs over there? No. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Um, any further discussion on this from last month? No real traffic, no real accidents to speak of. Um, I'm in touch with Smith College, and uh, they are interested, they may be interested in um, advocating for a uh, uh, school zone mm -hmm. designation. And um, <coughs> I've also asked them about their willingness to, which they haven't responded to, but asked them about their willingness to fund a sidewalk on the, uh, on the on their side of the street that go to go to from their building to Trumbull. I know that was part of the discussion from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Anything to add on that, uh, Rich? Okay. Yeah, I would. I guess I'd like to um, just keep the big picture of that street in mind, and uh, as long as we're negotiating. Smith for potential funding of expensive improvements there. Um, you know, a new 
sidewalk might be great, but um, as you know, the, this is on our list. This is you know, number one or number two on the prioritized list of the TCAs, traffic calming applications. And um, there are a lot of things that, that could benefit that street from the perspective of the bicycles and pedestrian and traffic safety. And there might be things that we would choose to do instead of the sidewalks with the same amount of money. So it might be speed humps or curb extensions. You know, I've always proposed that it would make a great bicycle boulevard where um, you know, parallel to King Street, uh, drivers can use King Street. They can still use State Street, but it could be a much more friendly bike zone in the town. So I just want to put that beat in your bottom as long as you're in the process of talking about it. It's uh, it is high on the list. Yeah. Uh, because of its use, right? All its use, its crash history, everything. It's, it's got a lot of points. It's number one or number two on the yeah, it's, 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 got got a, it's got a lot of points. And then South Street to the bike path. Right. And, it, and I will not ride that section of State Street. I, I get off, walk a bike path, go over, you know, to get to the gym, I go a very circuitous route mm -hmm. because I just cannot abide that tight traffic. So, yeah, I was sitting here thinking, if you put it in a sidewalk, I'm riding on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but then it ends after trouble. I mean, that's the difficult yeah. part, right? That's why I think we need to take a look at some the whole approach. I, I went by there the other day at release time, and there were cars out onto State Street that were actually blocking the highway, blocking the street. So that, I mean, in the sense that you had to wait for oncoming traffic to go by before you could go around. And that, uh, I mean, certainly slows everything down, but it's, it would, it's probably bike and pedestrian, uh, you know, problem for those cars at that, at that release time. You know, with that driveway, I know, is circular and comes back. And it was loaded from State Street all the way around and, and out again. So, and then you've got people crossing, the, the walkers crossing crosswalks just beyond the school there by Michael's house, it was, it was uh, I think, probably a, a problematic for all the cars that were out on the street. I mean, for people walking and uh, bicycles. So should we, I don't, I don't know how to proceed because we don't have any money, but should we look at cheap solutions? Uh, redirecting, reader, I mean, we can look at eliminating parking on in front of Michael's house to a lot of things there. Um, you take away parking, you, you do have other effects, but you can you could put a bike, you could put a significant bike lane in, you could put a, a wide <coughs> shoulder on the on the Smith School side so that cars can pull over. I mean that's a, those aren't expensive. I mean they have they have downsides but they're not expensive. Well you say we don't have money but you're talking with with people at Smith about them possibly Well I have asked them. I mean, about their interest and, and so on. I mean, they, they haven't said, oh, you know, tell us, give us your wish list. <laughs> but that's, I do know that they had an interest in that particular element of that uh, sidewalk. So, so as, as we found out in, in numerous studies of State Street, we know that student is a problem on State Street. My feeling is we should be doing this for the trying to remember the speed that I thought it was fairly compliant with 85th percentile. In my memory is different, much higher. Okay. Yeah. I hadn't looked at it in a while. Well, I could look on the internet, but I don't have access, so. <laughs> could you resurrect the conversation on a one-way street? That was a number of years ago. No, I wouldn't <laughs> that. Um, I guess I'm just asking, do you want to carry this over until next month? Do you think we're going to get any more ideas between now and then? Or we'll just put it on the shelf until we can shake some money? Yeah. Shake the money and then, have, and then work with DPW and interested parties to, to provide the solutions. Yeah. Okay. So we'll put it on the shelf now. Uh, all right, next. Uh, ordinance 6. Dash four three six six parking garage claims his referral. I don't think we have it anymore. Mm -hmm. 
So this is, uh, this is roughly speaking, a, a new ordinance uh, under claims for uh, parking garage overcharging. Um, it would be given to the uh, city solicitor to adjudicate. Um, let me uh, read the ordinance here. This is for overcharging for parking fees, which arise out of the garage, shall be presented to the city solicitor. The city solicitor shall reduce said claims, investigate the circumstances, and determine the extent of liability on the part of the city, provided, however, that for each claim submitted for the period between the dates of October 31st and November 6th, that inclusive that no liability exceeds $5 for each claim, no liability is below 50 cents for each claim, and that the maximum liability to the city for all claims submitted for this matter is $15,112. Uh, claims shall be submitted in the form acceptable to the city solicitor, but shall not require receipt of payment with the method of collecting parking fees in the parking garage at the time and date being claimed do not include an option for users to receive a receipt. Uh, the solicitor shall cause a record to be kept of all claims submitted and the disposition of each. As of June 30th of each year, the city solicitor shall prepare a report of all claims approved the fiscal year ending said, on said June 30th. The report shall list the following information for each claim, name of claimant, date of incident, date approved, and I'll pay. So this was, I wrote this, and it was referred uh, by the council to the TPC and the ordinance And I'm sorry, we, we don't have it for you. Take a motion to recommend. <laughs> okay, so uh, dies, dies on the table, no recommendation. Uh, let's go on to fish items on public property. Uh, I've asked the Chief Procurement Officer, Joe Cook, to um, uh, give us a <clears throat> summary. I think it was included in the uh, in the packet here. Um, <clears throat> we were talking. We've talked over the last couple of years, on and off, a little bit about uh, associations and uh, individuals possibly putting fisheye mirrors on public ways so they could see coming out of their driveways or part of their private ways and so on and so forth. Um, so one of the the idea that uh, Ned and I have been talking about with the DPW was that uh, um, the DPW would have a certain set of standards, but that the, it would be privately paid for. Um, and uh, but one stumbling block always seemed to be who you know the city's liability. So I asked the, our um, sort of insurance manager. Joe Cook to weigh in on the city <coughs> in regard to this issue. Um, did everybody have a chance to do this? Okay. Any discussion on this? Yeah, just as a practical, and then this one Smith College has on West Street, but I do find it down there. So I, I get the benefit. I guess my concern is it's not going to be it's going to be across the street for the person who's accident. Um, so are we, what are we attaching? These have new poles for them, or attaching the yeah. poles? Yeah, new poles. So the person will be paying all those costs, not just the mirror, but the pole. Yeah. Okay. You have a seven or eight foot high pole. And the pole would be on the city property? Yeah. I, I didn't get the across the street piece of it when I read it. Because you're coming down your driveway, and that's what you want. Right. That's right. Lenses are put up probably eight to ten or if not twelve feet up in the air, and not seven feet up. So they're gonna have to have quite a structure to put them up there because we wouldn't allow a two by four post or a four by four post 
to the snap off the plumbing operations. So whoever wants to do this is going to have a real need because it's going to be extremely expensive to do. I'm still struggling with uh, across the street. So who owns the property that the pole goes on? It would be in the city layout, if at all possible. Where it's going to become problematic is where you don't have any green belt. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, in the back of the sidewalk is the property line. And even though it's city layout, the person across the street may well think of it as their property. Yeah. And my knowledge. Yeah. I got that. But I guess my own feeling is mm -hmm. in the places where there really is a blind curve, it makes sense, it's fine. But I just I hate for these things for a for people who sort of are paranoid about hanging out the driveway. Mm -hmm. Well, if it's on city property, wouldn't the city have something? Wouldn't these be a case by case? I mean, I, I, I'm not you. I don't want to. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No. I think we can. We all believe that this would be because it'd be case. I mean, it'd be people who would a be willing to pay. Right. B. There would there would probably be a process that we would, that the commission would initiate, and then <clears throat> run through the board, the public works, and then probably the council. But it could be a package. It, if we're if the commission is interested in making this into a package process, it can you know it can be you could have a couple of criteria sent it to the board. The board would probably team it or probably concur with the parking commission as with the city. But you have to get these kinds of concerns out of the way. If the city has liability for this, then the really it shouldn't go forward. So t today, if I went into Ned and said, I'm from your, you'd say no, there's no fault to it. Basically, I'd say no. Okay. So just so everyone here knows, it took the board almost two years to work through the tourism direction sign policy and get that in place. And even then, each location, just for those particular signs, are you got to be pushing five to $800 per sign location. And then also, we had the same incident where we had to remove one from someone's house because they did not want it there. Well, the fish I lunch, you can do that. Have to be at that driveway location. Okay. And currently, I only know of two citizens in Northampton that have a somewhat requested for them. And when you said a substantial expense to put it up high enough, what, can you scale that for me? Is it two thousand? Is it four thousand? It could be. More likely, we would come up with a recommendation of probably breakaway metal poles, things of that nature, um, a tubular pole. Um, and then what happens when it falls down? I mean, obviously, we got uh, liability issues to deal with, but what if the pole snaps in two and falls down and it's a bicyclist or something? And the person across the street has a minimum insurance policy. Of course, he's going to sue the city. Well, the other thing you're going to say is car randomly hits it. We don't happen to the middle of the night. It should become our responsibility. The mm -hmm. poor guy with a, who paid the two thousand dollars may be out of luck. It's not right. The city case. right. Well, the um, we did discuss the second part. That this, that upon installation, the whoever purchases it would pay would pay the city a few hundred dollars or some some number. That's a contingency. To, which would cover the cost of the city removing removing the down pole. Um, I don't think this is a it's not a cheap fix. It's probably around five thousand dollars. To be frank. I kind of want the bar to be on. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. I, I think we should not make it easy for this to happen. I, I am personally not a fan of fish eye mirrors anyway. I just don't think they work very well. I think you get a better sense from looking directly. And they're so, especially if it's across the street, um, the view up and down that street of oncoming cars, the cars are so tiny. The field of view is huge. You see everything in the world, but everything is very small in that view. It's pretty hard to tell what's going on. I, I, I just have really limited confidence that we're solving any, any significant uh, visibility problems with fish line nerves. So I think the bar should be on. So what brought this forward? Are there any requests? Oh uh, yeah, I've got a constituent. It's actually a condo association which could afford to do it, mm -hmm. and they when they come down Bixby Court, you know they they don't feel like 
can see very well onto Holly Street. Holly Street's pretty parked up. Um, so we were, we were talking about that as a, as a possible fix. They, they can't afford it. Uh, it would go across the street um, and so on. But, uh, and also we've had these, we've, we've had unsatisfied uh, people or, you know, talk about not being able to get out of their driveway and so on and so forth, that uh, if we could offer this, <coughs> assuming they fit within the criteria, if we could offer this as a solution, albeit well, an expensive one, but as a solution, it's better than no solution. That's at least my perspective. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we need to take action on this today, but uh, I think it should be. Um, <coughs> I'm happy to here that the cities, um, that the, at least the uh, gentleman involved in managing the city's liability believes that a whole harmless arrangement um, would be sufficient and that the, the owner wouldn't have to purchase a separate policy on, on the pond to indemnify the city. Alternative, can the, can the city just not accept them? Yep. That's what they do, right? We well, don't right, right now, you just, just say no. Yeah, I think uh, the only one that I recall that still might be standing is off Chesterfield Road, <laughs> one of the driveways out there. That's the only one I can think of. This one at Smith College has the back way from the athletic facility by that substation, right by where you put the, the stop logs. I didn't know that. But do they have their own? I mean, isn't that on their own property? Oh, property. Yeah. Oh, is it? It doesn't cross the camera where it is? It might be. I mean, it might be in the public way, but it's, it's close to their. It's close okay. enough to their property, so that I think that that's. You know, the issue turns out even just us talking about it. I'd rather. I mean, rather than just an absolute no. I mean, I think that, that all of the things that come to play are relevant when somebody's thinking about doing it. Whether it's effective, how much it's going to cost me, what's the liability, and I think it's a much more complicated topic than you know it is on face value. So I, I, being able to put that all together and explain it to a citizen who's requesting this, I think would be better than just, no, we don't do that, which, I'm not to say you do that, but it's, um, we're just having a discussion, I'm wondering what is the outcome, I like, I like the, the, you know, getting a, an opinion that says it, it, the city's not more responsible than we thought they were. But what are you thinking that might be the outcome of this? Guidance to them? No, I don't think so. I, I think we would want to have a, um, I think the commission would want to be able to have some criteria uh, that would be, that it would use when someone has a, has a, has a kind of concern like this, where they say, well, can't we eliminate this part of the space, or can't we do this or that? Um, and, and we offer that this as an option to offer them that this fisheye solution as, as maybe their only option or as a, an option in the mix. So the more recent one that came to my attention was up on Route 66 near the West Hampton town line where uh, a resident up there started a landscaping business out of his house and with it he has bigger trucks and a long trailer now and with the cars going through there at a decent rate of speed now he's finding out he has trouble pulling out with his long trailer and had an end of time. So he had a request in, I think, about six months ago. Didn't go too far. Right, same sort of thing. I mean, he might be willing to pay for an expensive but sustainable you know, tube with a, with a decent mirror on top. But uh, if we can't give him the option, then I think I do think we're not doing as well as a city if we can't, if we can't say, okay, well, this is not going to hurt anything or whatever if you want to pay for it. Um, so, I mean, that's so about efficacy, it, that's, that's another if story. If they want to do it and pay for it, <laughs> that doesn't do any harm, right? But I also think it's going to be hard to give, uh, it's such a case-by-case -case basis. I, I'm, I'm thinking, what kind of guidance can I give there? You know, sort of. Go ahead, Nick. I'll send out a local uh, uh, email to my, my DPW director's list serve um, and see what other communities are doing about that. Oh, that'd be good. Start. Be a start. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we would say 
you know, on streets, if we had any traffic data, streets where the speed limit's, you know, less than 25 miles an hour, what's the big deal, right? I mean, because you could just kind of pull out a little bit, probably. Or maybe that would be, a, maybe, maybe that's wrong. Maybe that has to be under 20 miles an hour. Or maybe the street has to not have that much traffic. Or I think just because, I, I think there might be some criteria. Let me put it that way. I think there might be some criteria. I'm not sure exactly what they, what where the commission would want to set that, those, let me put it, street like Route 66 where that's curvy and you can, you can get cars moving pretty quickly. You might want to be able to see a little bit further. So it sounds like if we had the criteria so that the, so that the city is whole, you know, that there's no liability yes, issue like this, um, which makes the, the price high enough for a citizen who wants to do it, then they're going to really investigate whether, you know, the mirror is going to do what they want to do. And then if it still has to go through some sort of vetting process through the city council or back to this commission on a case-by-case -case basis, then... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, like, I hear what you're saying. I like the idea of at least offering a citizen an opportunity as opposed to just saying no. Yeah, I think the council would have to approve it ultimately. Is it, am I right, Ned? Um, <clears throat> the only way the council would approve it is if we had some form of revolving fund for it. Oh, as I we do for the tourism directional signs. Because they the they put in for because we maintain those signs right. going forward if they get hit and run over or whatever. Maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't be the full council. Maybe it would just be the board or whatever it is. There would be two layers. I mean, assuming that it would happen here and at the board. I'm not, I mean, I still always want us to make sure we stay as a policy board. So I think certainly this discussion is great and advising in terms of what the policy should be. But I don't think we should be involved with the retail. But once there's policies, and I think that's DPW staff function there, is this particular place the right place for it? Oh, okay. Know. I like the research offer. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so maybe we'll just, uh, maybe that can just be an ongoing discussion point. <coughs> uh, committee applicant nominations and approvals. So far, just one, really? So I have. Okay. Nomination. Not running after today. I'm a nomination for uh, the bike pet committee. Yes? Yes. No, <laughs> yes <laughs> Can I get a second? <laughs> okay, second. James. Um, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Welcome. Thank you, Alice. Um, <clears throat> DPW updates. Here's what I'm working on that right, right at the moment. <clears throat> just trying to get an extra paving schedule and what we might be doing. Make sure we have funds for that. We're also looking at street reconstruction projects. Uh, a lot of it's going to be contingent on funding the stormwater utility coming up. Uh, that's key for stormwater management on these streets. Um, working with Patty Shaughnessy on Council on Aging about uh, audible signals at pedestrian crossings in the South Street neighborhood, Old South Street neighborhood, Con Street. Um, that's really what's on my plate right at the moment. Great. Any questions? Am I wrong that that crosswalk has a mind of its own sometimes on cross on Con Street? On Con's and Old South? No, no on Con's all the way down at the center. Oh, that's flashing light. Oh, oh at, the, at South House? <laughs> <laughs> the rapid flashing beacons? Yes. They get, they're sensitive, and Laura tried her best to tone down that sensitivity, but sometimes they, someone walks by a little too close, they set off and the person's not crossing. Okay. I think the same thing's true for the low bridge warning, that you know, PBTA buses that are, I think, a foot, foot below the height set them off, and other things seem to set them off. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't matter, but they do go off. Is that the kids off. having fun downtown? <laughs> so the, I think the ones at Con Street have been fixed so that it wasn't a motion detecting 
But maybe it's not just motion on one. Maybe it's just motion on one side and not the other. I think, I think that's how they resolved it. Was taking it off. You had push button on one side and motion on the other. So that's it's motion on the um, cell house side, but not on the medical office side. I have to go look. I don't remember off the end. Because it was worse than it is now. Because it was, I think, motion on both sides, and it was a kind of this wide skirt that was being cast. And, you know, if someone pulled out of the driveway at the medical center, it would go. But I think it's better now. But I do think that uh, you're going to have the motion to detect getting a little crazy. A question for Ned, maybe also for Wayne. Is there any news on a uh, report from Capital Improvements? And I know that, once again, you submitted a request for uh, traffic calming funds and capital improvements. Do we know the outcome of that request? I don't know. Thanks for requesting. Not at all. Anything else? Any new business? Well, I want to thank everyone. I uh, don't have the full commission here, but thank you for um, making my, my time on this commission uh, pleasant. And, uh, and driving you to quit. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am happy. I'm happy. My accomplishment is uh, is getting these meetings so that they're not always two hours long. So I'm happy about that. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, Owen. You've been thank away you. been here for us for several years. Motion to adjourn? I won't. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? All right. All right.